Palmer, uh, Miss Beckford, I am going to be serving as acting vice principal for the blue ship. Uh, Mrs. Taylor has taken some time off to rest, so I'm holding office until she returns. We have Mr. Nelson, who is vice principal for the red ship. I'm sure most of you, if not all, would know Mrs. Coley, our Dean of Discipline, and our nurse, Nurse Henry, the president of the Past Student Association. And after this year, you will be past students, so you need to know that there is an association. And afterwards, we'd love for you to be a part of the association. Mr. Jason Stewart is in charge at this time. The president of the PTA, Miss Suzette Lawrence, and your grade supervisors for this year. You will have two grade supervisors. Miss Doig, grade supervisor for grade 11, and Mr. Mills, supervisor for grade 11. Your guidance counselors, Miss Ford, you're going to be. Mrs. Palmer, can you help me with the mics, please? Can you control the mics for me, Mrs. Palmer, please? Uh, your your guidance Miss Beckford, you need to open your mic now. Miss Beckford. Yes, miss. Yes, you need to open up here. Oh, okay. I'm I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Thank you. We weren't here in your for a little while, and I muted everybody. Oh, okay, okay. Your form teachers for this year, and as I said, there may be a few changes, but we have Miss Brown who will be form teacher for eleven arts. Miss Bennett, form teacher, eleven B E A. Miss Carr, 11 BEB. Miss Blackwood, 11 BEC. Mr. Aldridge, 11 ITA. Mr. Williams and Miss Walters for 11 ITE. Mr. Neal, 11 ITC. Miss Jones, HEA. Miss Campbell, HEB. So those are the form teachers for this year. As you get ready to move into uh, with, with Ernest, your last year, I'd like to encourage you, and I know that you're pressed for time, but I'd like to encourage you to be a part of at least one club or society. I'll be sharing with you a few of those that we have here at school. Okay, so those are your form teachers. As I said, there may be a few changes um, to the lineup, but by next week, if there are changes, we will inform you. At this time, in light of what is happening, uh, even though we're not going to be going face to face, um, though we're not going to be going face to face, there are quite a bit well, there's quite a bit that you would need to know as it relates to your health and wellness. So we're going to be inviting our school nurse, Nurse Henry, to share a little on how we can help to safeguard ourselves as we move into this new academic year. Nurse Henry. Pleasant good afternoon to everyone. Good afternoon, Miss. Good afternoon, Miss. This is Nurse Henry. Most of you would have been familiar with me already. Welcome back to another year at school. And I wish you all the best. And I hope that everyone will be is staying safe at this time as we go through this pandemic. 
I will just give you a brief overview of the health and wellness department at Bridgeport High School. Our mission is to is committed to provide quality healthcare services to both our students and teachers on a daily basis by a professional. Uh, excuse agent. me, nurse. Nurse. Yes. Just a minute. Just give me one minute, please. Okay. And I, I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself right after. You. Okay, go ahead now, nurse. Unmute yourself and then you continue, please. Okay, thank you very much, Mrs. You're Sweeney. most welcome. Thanks, too. Okay, our, the mission of the health and wellness at Bridgeport High School, we are committed to providing quality healthcare services to both our students and staff on a daily basis by a professional registered nurse. Services provided at the sick bay are we treat injuries such as cuts and bruises, sprains and strains, headaches, abdominal pain, nausea, and vomiting. We also assist students to the medical doctor or the hospital as the need arises, providing that all consent forms would have already been signed by your parents. We also do health promotion and health education activities at the sick bay. I will now look at a very a topic, the topic that the thing that has prevented us from coming to school face to face, the coronavirus. And because of this pandemic, it has caused us not to be able to come to school face to face. So I will just give you a little brief synopsis of what is this coronavirus or COVID-19 as it is also called. It is a virus that causes infection in the nose, the throat, and sinuses and can ultimately affect your respiratory system. In fact, this disease has an affinity for your respiratory system. What are the signs and symptoms of COVID or coronavirus? Persons infected may experience sore throat, cough, shortness of breath, chest pain, fever, rapid heartbeat, breathing difficulties, chills, pneumonia, which are end stage, and kidney failure, and ultimately, persons can die. This disease does not discriminate against color, creed, nationality, as we have seen. This is a pandemic, meaning it has stretched worldwide. The mandate of the health, the mandate of the Ministry of Health and Wellness is to stem the spread of the coronavirus. And so they have put in place measures that they believe can help to stem this spread. And one of the method of curtailing the spread is washing our hands. By the way, this disease is transmitted through droplets, in, droplets infection from our nostrils and mouth, as well as if we get if, it, if the virus is on any surface and we come into contact with that surface, we, have, we can also contract the virus. One of the measures put in place to stem the virus is washing of our hands. And we encourage everyone to wash your hands frequently. Even though you're going to be at home and not in the physical school, there are times you will have to go out on the road. We ask that as you come home, please wash your hands with soap and running water. We also ask that you, you use a reliable hand sanitizer. Also, the wearing of your mask. This is imperative because this helps to contain droplets from our nose and our mouth. The mask must be worn correctly, meaning it must cover your nose and it must cover your mouth. If you are having difficulties, because some persons might complain that they're having difficulties breathing, it is better for you to wear the surgical mask, no, which gives you more space to breathe. We also ask you to practice social distancing. I know it's going to be very difficult when you see your friends, not to give a hug, but at this time, all those things are prohibited because of the fear of catching this virus. 
also in order for our bodies to fight off any disease we must function at our bodies must be functioning at an optimal level so ways ways and means to boost your immune system are eat a healthy diet drink plenty water take your supplements such as vitamin C or a multivitamin. Get adequate sunlight and fresh air. Get your rest. So we ask that you will go to your beds early at night so that you can get enough rest to wake in the morning to start school. And when you get adequate rest, at least eight hours, studies have shown that sleeping improves concentration and productivity problem solving, memory performance in both adults and children, while a lack of sleep has, has been shown to impair brain function. We also ask that you will find coping mechanisms to reduce any form of stresses that may arise. The school has in place guidance and counselors who are capable and are there to assist you to deal with any stress, stressors that may arrive during this time. We ask that you maintain good hygiene and we ask that throughout this pandemic, for those who are believers, put your trust in God. He is able to carry us and see us through. Our health and education promotion, we are asking parents and children, you are now grade 11, big children, please, when you get up in the morning, ensure that you have your <laughs> breakfast because this is important. You might have heard the old adage, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. And it turns out to be true. It has shown to improve memory. Studies show that children that eat breakfast tend to have improved cognitive skills and perform better at school. Improved concentration, better test results, and increased energy. When you return to school, please, parents, let your children know your number, know where you work. So therefore, if we have to contact them, it will, we, will, we will not have a problem. I thank you very much. Thank you very much, Nurse Henry. We appreciate the timely reminders. At this time, we're going to continue our sharing with you in terms of how you can best care for yourself during this difficult time. And we're going to invite a presentation now from the guidance department. This time, presentation from the guidance department. Welcome back students. We are very happy to have you with us once again and look forward to a productive new school year. We would like to remind you that your guidance counselors, Mrs. Holmeswives, Miss Mayer, and Mrs. Fraser Brown remain committed to your psychological and emotional well-being, especially in these very uncertain and unpredictable times. We know that you may be feeling a little stressed anxious, overwhelmed, and all sorts of other unpleasant emotions. But we want to assure you that we will be providing as much psychosocial support as you may need to help you to get through these trying times. As part of our efforts to help you to adapt to our new normal and to cope with the negative effects of the situation, we have created a five-hour plan. Remind, reinforce, reassure, refocus, relaxation. We are going to be reminding you of the COVID-19 protocols do's and don'ts for before, during, and after school. We are going to be reinforcing the behaviors that we want you to engage in. 
we are going to be encouraging the positive behaviors and discouraging the negative ones. We are going to reassure you through psychosocial support. We are going to be talking about how you are feeling, how you are doing, and teach you healthy ways to cope. We are going to refocus your learning because learning must continue. We are going to teach you relaxation techniques and help you to practice them. You have a part to play as well. We are asking you to cooperate with us as we help you to adapt to this new normal in a safe and non-stressful way. Together we can and we will. If you are struggling to cope or have any other concerns at school or home that you may need help with, reach out to us by direct call or WhatsApp. Our three numbers are 876-213-4856, 876-325-5964, and 876-288-2022. We are ready and waiting to connect with you and help you to get through it. If you are at school, you may also ask your teacher's permission to visit the guidance department. In closing, we would like to leave this quote with you to remind you that courage is not the absence of fear, but the ability to continue in spite of fear. We are looking forward to seeing you soon. Remember, we are stronger together. Thank you very much. And at this time, we're going to continue our presentations. I'd like to invite our Dean of Discipline, Mrs. Coley, to make a presentation to you. Mrs. Coley, over to you. Thank you, Ms. Rector. Good afternoon, students, parents, staff members. Students, it's good to have you back. I hope all of you are well and you're excited to begin this final, you're on the final leg of this race here at Bridgeport High School. Um, I know that I don't have to speak to my senior students who will be sitting sexy about, you know, their discipline and their conduct, um, because I am sure that you're going to conduct yourself in a manner that is in keeping with the school's rules and policies. I just want to remind you that even though you are not physically on the compound and you'll be having school online until we, we don't know when, the, all the school rules, the sanctions, all rules still apply. Um, we have specific rules for our online engagement, which, which includes that you should be in your uniform. So once you are timetabled for classes, and you are logging on to your classes, you must be in your uniform. You can wear the school polo shirt or a PE top, but it must be a Bridgeport High School uniform that you're logging in. We're gonna ask that you log in with your cameras when you log on for your classes um, with your full name. So the ALS is we have been trying to get some persons in the waiting room to rename their devices. Um, it's the same thing that's gonna happen when you have your classes. If we can't identify who you are, then you'd not be allowed in the classes. So you have to ensure that you rename your device, wear your uniform, and that you turn on your camera so that we can know um, for attendance purposes, who is in the classroom. We also ask that while you're in your online classes, you mute your microphones and you only open your mic if you are responding to something that the teacher asks um, or if you're having classroom discussion based on the teacher's um, leading. So we're gonna ask you to bear that in mind. Cyberbullying, the name calling, not all of that is unknown and I don't expect at this point that my grade 11s will be um, caught up in, in, in all of that um, because at this time you have to be focused. It's, it's, a it's a different learning environment and so you're going to have to remain focused. You're going to have to put away 
the, 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 these behaviors so that you can be fully engaged and focused. We expect that you're going to be respectful to your teachers. And I want to speak primarily about the WhatsApp groups. Most of our teachers will be having WhatsApp grade groups. Um, and I'm gonna ask grade 11 students, please be careful of your language. There should be no chatter in the WhatsApp group unless it, it is about the school, the school work. Remember, these are platforms now that are being used for your learning. Hence, if you want to have a discussion with your class with your friend, you can do so off the school, the school um, platform and you call them privately, but we don't have those discussions. Profane languages, all of that, those are not allowed and anybody who is found in breach of that you will be disciplined not because you're in grade 11 and it's a critical time remember suspensions and they accumulate and they have implications for your graduation please ensure that the picture that you have up for your whatsapp when you are joining the whatsapp group it has to be a clear picture of yourself we do not want to see any any ganja leaf we don't want to see any of the the, the fuzzy the bunny bunny ears and all those things we want to see a clear picture of you in these whatsapp groups so that is what is allowed students we are depending upon you to be responsible um you are 11th graders um you have much work to do so we're we're depending on you to be responsible i don't expect to have any behavioral challenges this term with the 11th graders um i expect that you're going to conduct yourself as you ought to. Um, we wish you all the best in your endeavors and I look forward to a good year with you, a productive, disciplined year, a successful year. So all the best. Thank you, Ms. Beckford. Thank you very much, Mrs. Coley. And I trust that you have been listening. Students, Please, there are a number of persons who are in the waiting room who will not be allowed in because they have not signed in properly. When you're signing in, as Mrs. Coley said, full name and form class. Full name and form class, all right? And you want to practice from now, from now, please. Okay, so we're going to continue our presentations. And at this time, we're going to be inviting one of your great supervisors for this year to address you, Miss Doig. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. To our parents and guardians and also form teachers, other members of the Bridgeport High School family, um, colleagues, um, also a warm welcome to all our grade 11 students. Welcome to academic year 2020-21. And um, we just want to wish for you a very good year. You know, the word of God said, children are a heritage of God. Blessed is a man that at them in his quiver. And so we are truly blessed to have you in our quiver at the Bridgeport High School and also on this platform. We give God thanks for sparing our lives in this pandemic. It is not a normal school year and there are many adjustments to be made. Students, ensure that you keep in touch with your teachers. We are working from different platforms at this time and we have been going through since last week, we have been looking at the school-based assessment projects or whatever other form they will take. So you should have joined your classes since last week. If you have not, Yet done so, please get in touch with your teacher or with the school, you know, and we'll see where we can assist you in joining the, the various classes. Okay, um, much is required of you at this time, students. You must prepare to work on your own, ensure that you take your books with you, have your books with you when you, uh, you join the classes because you will work in from those books that you get from the book room and those that your parents bought for you because you'll have to do a lot of research at this time. Okay, until we can meet face to face, I'm gonna implore all of you to work with the teachers because we are here to work with you. We love you and we want the best for you. You are at a, a, a very crucial stage in the, in the school at this time. You are fifth formers and much is expected of you. You know, and so I wish for you, as I said before, a productive year, in spite of what is happening at this time, 
we are you must ensure that you keep yourself safe in your communities on the road wherever you yes, go please. because we don't we do not want to hear that Kimberly. Our children Kimberly are Ferguson. getting in trouble Ferguson. or if they contract this this okay. pandemic okay. um this covid 19 okay. okay so i'm just appealing to all of you find strength in jesus have no fear just depend on him he will help you whatever concerns you have you can speak to jesus yes he's always willing to listen to you and so i just want to say to you at this time have a good year have no fear and as we always say at bridgeport i can do all things through christ who strengthens me god be with you and bless you and keep you have a good year take care Thank you very much, Miss Doyle. Yes, please. Thank you, Miss Beckford. Okay. And we're moving nicely along, students. I know some of you may have questions. If you have questions, if you have any concerns, I'm going to invite you to type in the chat any questions, any concerns that you have. Uh, those persons who are joining on YouTube, um, make notes of your questions. We will give you an opportunity to type in your questions a little later. But those who are on Zoom, you can go ahead and type your questions in the chat. Um, those who came in late, please register your presence by typing your full name and your form class in the chat. So a lot has been said so far. And we want to continue to share with you. Now, CXE results came out yesterday and a number of persons, well, there are some persons who are celebrating and some persons who are not so very happy. Uh, we have with us, I have invited one of my students from last year. This person is Kimberly. Ferguson, Kimberly, I'm going to invite you to open your mic because sometimes I think it is a little better when you hear from your own. Kimberly, are you there? Yes, miss. All right. So grade 11, I'm introducing to you Kimberly Ferguson. She has just completed, she just collected her results and she is one of those students who did pretty well, has been doing well at Bridgeport High School. And I just wanted her to share a little with you. Kimberly, can you share with the students who are here, how many subjects you have at the CXE level in all? I have 10 subjects. Say that again, please. I have 10 CXE subjects. You have 10 CXE subjects. Kimberly, in what grade did you start doing CXE exams? I started in grade nine. And how many subjects did you do in grade nine? I was given the opportunity to do two, yes. but you couldn't do math in grade nine. You have to do it over in grade 10 to add social studies in the first year. Okay. And did you, and in grade 10, you did another two subject? subjects, you yeah. Did, so you did one in grade nine, yes, miss, and you did two, two in, grade in grade 10. ten. And you passed those two in grade 10? Yes, miss. Wonderful. And how many subjects did you sit this year at the CXE level? Eight. And how many subjects did you pass this year at the CXE level? Eight. All right, so I have set the foundation for what I really want to ask. So you know now who you're listening to, all right? Kimberly, if yes, you miss. advise the students, how, how was preparation for exams for you? <laughs> oh, it was very challenging because due to the lack of Wi-Fi or internet base and the noise, because it's not every time you have peace and quiet to study, and yes. you have to find certain places to go to to get a good enough space to understand or to focus yourself to study. And then you have the COVID challenges where you can't really go certain places, and you have to be social distancing, and you can't talk to people. So that, especially if you need understanding of certain things, 
So you had a lot of challenges preparing for exams this year. Yes, miss. Yes. How, how did you find doing the SBAs for you? How were the SBAs? Well, they weren't that hard depending on its subject. For example, information technology, it was kind of hard because the syllabus for the SBA kept on changing last minute. So you had to be redoing over the SBA. Oh, so you did it and then the teachers asked you to redo it and you redid your project, yes? Yes, miss. And were there times when the teachers gave you back the projects to make corrections? Yes, miss. And did you make the corrections? Yes, miss. Okay. Um, when did you start doing SBAs? Um, for, for this set of exams? The, I think summer, last year summer. Okay. To come over into grade 11. Okay, so you started from grade 10 coming yes, over miss. into grade 11. Okay, and you would have done like first drafts and handed them in when the teachers asked you to hand them in? Yes, miss. Okay. By the deadline. Oh, and you stuck to the deadlines that the teachers gave you? Yes, miss. Wonderful, wonderful. One final question, Kimberly, and I want to thank you very much because I asked her at the short notice to come on and help me. What advice would you give to these students who, one, would have missed out some of grade 10, they're starting grade 11 late, a lot of them would not have started the SBAs as yet. What advice would you give to them? First of all, one, Ask your teacher for the notes or someone in your class who have the notes to give you and go to your teacher for help. Ask, look, go online because the syllabuses are online. You can prepare by yourself. You don't really have to accept some people because some people don't like to share. Um, come off of your phone. That's a one thing. You need to come off of your phone. Less social media time because that can take up most of your time. One minute, they're going to say, Masu, come off of the phone. You're not going to come off. It's going to take about two hours for you to come off. And that two hours, you could use to occupy your time by studying. And it's not like, say, you guys are going to get paper one. You're going to get paper one and paper two next year. So it's going to be much harder for you. And I don't think the six, you're probably going to repeat the questions like what they did this year. And what else? Each day you go home, read over your notes, because sometimes the teacher will just ask a question out of the blues, and you're not ready for it. That's it, man. Thank you so very much, Kimberly. I really appreciate your advice, and I trust students that you would have paid attention to what she was saying, and that you take heed. I Ms. like... Miss Gibbs, is one more something? Sure. Go ahead. You see, for the students who do geography, I would advise you <laughs> to have your textbooks. All not of only them. Have, and not only have the textbooks, but read the textbooks. Read huh? them, especially before Miss Stella to read them, because when it's time, you're going to have a lot of things to write out of the textbooks. And she's going to ask the questions out of the blues. So be prepared. Me a ton of from experience. Be prepared. Thank you very much, Kimberly. So, if we were to take from Kimberly, uh, from her experience, one, make sure you read the textbooks for all your subjects. Have the books and just read. A lot of the information is online. Read, read, read over your notes. You leave class, read over, get help from your teachers, do the SBAs, follow. Keep, in, keep on top of your deadlines. Do not allow the deadlines for the SBAs to miss you. And I'm leaving this one for last. You said you're to come off of your phone. Come off the phone. All right. So thank you so very much again. Uh, let me just continue a little in terms of sharing with you for your grade 11 experience. Now, you have to ensure that you change gears and you have to change gears really quickly because you have October, November, January, February, March, April. I'm not sure when we're going to have exams, um, but we, we start thinking about uh, March, April. I'm not sure if they're going to extend it, 
but you have to start from now. Start from now. Change gears, go into overdrive mode. Um, Mrs. Corley would have helped you in terms of online. Nurse would have helped you in terms of uh, your physical health. Guidance is there to give you emotional support. Teachers are here to help you in terms of just working through the information. So make sure you go into overdrive mode. You have been on go slow for a couple of months now. We need to change gears. Change gears, go into higher gear because we're heading really, really quickly towards the exam. All right? So you have to buckle down. School has already started for you. School has already started. I know you would have been engaging with your teachers quite a bit. I know that there are persons who you probably would have had in class last year. You're not seeing them in the online platform. Please, please speak to your classmates, speak to your peers and get them to come in on their classes, attend classes, do the work. Last year, the SBAs, the SBAs were done and the SBAs carried a lot of weight. What I said to the grade tens this morning, what you put in is what you will get out. When I look at the results, when I look at the results for one particular subject, I realize that those students who did very, very, very well on the SBAs, came out with better grade. They came out passing and not just passing, but they passed with really good grades. A lot of the teachers have started, have started. You cannot be a late non-starter. You cannot be slow out of the block. You cannot be slow out of the block. Everyone has to start now. We do not, sorry, you do not have a lot of time. I do not mean to scare you. I don't mean to get you nervous, but what I want for you is to focus. Focus and ensure that you have a goal in mind, a plan, and you know what it is that you want and you are able to achieve. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions and I'd like for you to respond by raising your hands. I just brought up my group so I can see when you respond. I'm going to ask, if you are in this room, I'm, I'm for the persons who are on um, YouTube, Mr. Palmer, are you able to give them access? They can do a thumbs up or they can type yes, no there, and then we'll see it a little later. I'm going to ask a few questions. I would like for you to raise your hands if you are not in all your online classes. If you're not in your online, all your online classes, raise your hands. YouTube, if you're not in your online classes, just type, I'm not in my, all my classes. All right. So there are a few people who are not in all their classes. For the most part, everybody is in some, you're in contact with your teachers. So most persons who are here are in contact with all your teachers. For those persons who raise their hands, I'm going to invite you, please contact person from your class. Um, We're going to be giving you some information a little later. Use the medium that we give you later to get in touch with your teachers. You cannot be late out of the block. When you say in running, him come out really, really fast because it's a dash. We're on the last dash now. The finish line is really near. You have been here four or five years. It makes no sense for you not to finish well. All right. I'm seeing the hands. I'm going to lower the hands now because I need to ask another question. If you are here on Zoom and you have started your online work. I'm not asking if you go to class and listen to what the teacher say. I'm asking if it is that you've gone to the classes and the teachers have given you sections of the SBAs or given you topics or subject areas that you have to go research and you have started. I'd like for you to raise your hand. If you're on YouTube, if you have started, type yes. If you have not, type no. 
All right, so there are quite a few persons who have started and there are quite a few persons here who have not started. I'm not sure if you know how to raise your hands. There's a raise hand feature. If you're on your laptops, it's at the bottom. It, it's, um, what is it? I think it's, it just says raise hands. All right, so just hover over your name, look for, some things that pop up and just click on raise hands. All right, I'm not seeing any additional hands, which means that a lot of persons have not started. Did you hear what Kimberly just said? All right, I'm going to lower the hands. I'm gonna lower the hands again because I need to ask one other subject. What, sorry, <laughs> one other question. How many persons in here intend to pass all the subjects at CXC level? You are sitting the subject and you intend to pass all of them. You see yourself passing all of the subjects then we do. Raise your hands for me, please. This is the last question. All right. Okay. All right, I'm seeing quite a few hands. I'm going to assume that there are some persons who are not sure how to raise hands, but I'm seeing quite a few hands. And I will check on the YouTube field a little later. I'm going to lower the hands. Thank you very much for responding. Students, if we intend to pass exams, it takes work. It takes a lot of work, it takes a lot of sacrifice, and you have to start now. As a matter of fact, you should have started already. But if you didn't, it's okay. You can start now. I beseech you, please get going. If the teacher started and you are a little behind, contact the teacher. Miss, sir, I know you did this already, you started already, but I really don't understand. Can you help me please? Start, get help if you need help, if you need to reach out to teachers, whatever needs to happen. One of the things that Kimberly said is that she had obstacles because sometimes the environment was not conducive. The environment was not right for her to do the work and she had to work around it. You're gonna have to learn to find ways to work around challenges so that you can achieve what it is that you want to achieve. Life is out there waiting for you, but you have to make sure you prepare yourselves adequately. Prepare yourselves adequately. One of the other things that you're going to have to bear in mind is this is your final year. You have been here with us at Bridgeport for five years. It makes no sense for you to come to an institution for five years and then after the fifth year, you cannot graduate. So I'm going to point out to you graduation is also something that you need to consider. You must consider graduation. In order to make the graduation list, you have to make sure that your academic performance is intact. So you have to have at least, at least 50% average across the board. You would have had to finish your voluntary service and we're going to speak a little more about voluntary service next week so everyone must finish your voluntary service you have to complete all your sbas if you are sent up for the subject and you do not do the sba you have automatically taken yourself off the list you must do all your sbas and you must sit your exams. So you cannot on the day of the exam say, sure, me can't bother, come and never read, I'm not prepared. You have to sit the exam, you have to complete all your SBAs in order to qualify 
before graduation. And I know that we are good behaving students, so I don't even have to spend any time on this. No suspension um, for any untoward activity online, offline. So I know we're not going to have a problem with this because we're focused and we don't have time for the foolishness this year. So I'm sure Mrs. Coley is going to spend all her time helping persons to do their SBAs because she will not have any disciplinary issues to talk about. Also, your attendance. Your attendance to class is important. We're starting online. Your attendance to the online classes is important. Your attendance to online classes is important. You have to ensure that you attend your classes. And of course, you should be in good financial standing with the institution. I want you to bear these things in mind. We're going to speak a little more about them, but you want to bear in mind graduation because this is your last year. I don't know about you, but I would find it very, very disheartening if I were to go to an institution for five years and not qualify for graduation. It is not the criteria not burdensome. It is what you should be doing. So please ensure that you work hard and ensure that you qualify for graduation, that you remain focused, that you create the environment that is needed in order for you to achieve what needs to be achieved. All right. I want to thank you very much for listening. And at this time, we're going to have Mrs. Roberts Clark who is your external exam coordinator. She is going to be sharing a little with us on um, exams, exam matters. Mrs. Roberts-Clark. Good afternoon, everyone. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. Um, students, welcome back to our new school year. So I'll, I'll just give you some information about external examination as you're in grade 11 and these information that I'm about to share with you, they are very, very important. So please, if you, if you have a pen and paper, you may jot down some of the information that I am about to share now. Now, the Bridgeport High School offers three different bodies of examinations. The CSEC, which is CSEC and CAPE, which is, is what we call CXC. Um, that's the one that you're, most of you will do. Some will do all three. The City and Gills, at present, we only offer mathematics. And the NCTVET, that's a heart exam, we offer cosmetology and electrical. So some students will be doing both electrical in NCTVET and the CSEC electrical. So you will be recommended by your teachers, but our new policy is that you will do all the subjects that you are presently doing now. You will sit all the subjects that you are presently doing in the exam. So if you are doing eight subject now, you are expected to sit this eight subject in CXC. If you are very weak in a subject area, I mean, when I say weak, I mean probably learning difficulty, learning problem, um, teacher might not recommend you and refer you to do the exam at another time. If you have not done the SBA, give them opportunities and reminders then you will not be sent up. At least start the SBA reach somewhere in the SBA where the teachers can say yes and recommend you because we're not expecting you to do to finish the SBA in October for all the subjects. So I'm imploring you guys to start your SBA, work on your SBA so the teachers can recommend you. So our registration will take place in October. So therefore you will get a form to populate. So the administrators from Bridgeport High School will send, will send a form to your parents and you populate the forms and email them back to, to, to the school. The form has all the information that is needed for examination. So you must populate it and email. 
examinations and SBA. All right, for the exam, there are three components for you to be awarded. Do your exam and awarded. You do a paper one, which is a multiple choice, a paper two, which is short answer and essay type question. And also your SBA, which is so important. I misreminded you earlier on that. If the SBA is not done, you will be ungraded. So please do not fool yourself and believe you can bypass the, the SBA. Without the SBA being completed and submitted, um, you will fail the subject. Let me remind you that all the SBAs must be done electronically and emailed to your teacher. No paper-based SBA will be allowed. So students, bear in mind, you have to type your SBA and email them to your teachers because that's the way it takes you strictly e-SBA. So the SBA is an assignment for parents and for students who, who don't get the understanding as yet. The SBA is an assignment given to students at different time of the year within the two year period. So that is grade 10 and 11. So the SBA given and it must be completed by January. So January would be the deadline for you to complete your SBA. And that is prior to May, June exam. So the SBA must be done and completed before the exam. And you see where they want it, six, you want it as early as January for you to send to your teacher and they mark and they mark it and, and send to the exam office so that we can submit it. So ensure that your exam your SBA is done in January. Finish and complete. All right, so there are two subjects that does not carry a SBA component. Those, those two subjects are human and social biology and Spanish. But that will be coming, that, will, that is on the stream. They will introduce that sometime to come. Okay, so why are you doing SBAs? Let me give you some functions of the SBAs. The SBA is regarded as good assessment practice. It provides opportunity for the teacher to gather data on students' performance over time. It provides a more reliable assessment of the student by those who know the students, and that is the teachers. It serves to motivate students by engaging them in meaningful activities that are relevant to them. It reinforces the curriculum aims and good teaching practice. It aligns assessment with curriculum instruction. It provides students with multiple opportunities to demonstrate their competence. It allows students to be active participants in the assessment process. It gives credence in and recognition to the teacher's informed judgment about the student's performance. And it also allows the teachers to be critical leaders in the assessment process. So these are, these are, the, some, some functions of SBA. And the SBA comes in different form. So based on the subject, some persons will do portfolios, practicals, journals, dramatic presentation, research assignment, multimedia presentation, community project, lab activity, including investigation, site visit, field trips. We don't know what will happen based on the COVID-19 now, but um, I'm sure that CXC will come up with something to replace some of the activities where we cannot get to meet you face to face. Orals are also done and case studies, sporting activities, designing or composing. And those are for the TVET subject. So these are, are the formats of SBAs. And as I mentioned earlier that CXC will come up with, um, in ways to replace the ones that we cannot do. Now, some persons were asking about the examination fees. At the moment, we are not privy to the cost of the present 2021 examination fee. But what I'm sharing with you now, uh, these fees are from, from last school year. So the students paid entry fee of 4,600. 
So everybody will pay an entry fee, but the subject fee was three, six, four, five. Now, the fees that will come will not deviate far from what is here. So you can basically use these fees as, as a guide. So if you are doing ten, five subjects, six subjects, you multiply that six by 3,645. If you are doing Spanish, an additional fee is the oral fee, which is $1,650. If you are doing human, any subject from the human ecology department, which is textile foods or management, you pay $1,340 for, for the practical fee. Plus there is a lab fee that, that will be charged. You will get that information in the future. Theater arts and music, 2,220. Physical education, 2,870. And so we have other fees for CAPE, but you're not doing CAPE right now. The CAPE fee is a little more expensive. Um, registration process. Okay, so the registration process. Um, students, you will be recommended by your teacher, after which the exam office personnel will, will calculate your fees and you will be given your payment voucher. Listen carefully. After you receive your payment voucher, your parents or guardian, they will pay your, your examination fees and submit the paid voucher to the exam department. You will be given dates and you'll be given a batch because we will not have all of you taking in the voucher at the same time, but we'll give in, we'll be, we will be giving you dates that you must adhere to. After you have submitted the paid voucher, then we are going to go through the registration process where we are going to enter all of your information, including your name, date of birth, all the subjects that you are doing, etc. So all the subjects, all the information that will be on that Google form, those are the information that we're going to use to register you. After registration, you, you brought in the voucher, um, it's verification time. So verification means that we are going to print information from the system and that is the information that we enter. So because we are human, we can make mistake, but it's going to, the onus is gonna be on you to check the, your information to ensure that your information is correct. And then we will give you instruction as how to, how to handle the verification. So you, that, that the students, parents, or whoever you have living in your house can check the information. And then if something is wrong, you can always indicate to us that something is wrong so we can fix the information. And you must sign, all of you must sign, your parents and guardian, parents, guardian, or student, and the students rather, must sign to say that the information is correct. If it is not correct, you indicate to us, we fix, and then you sign to say that it is correct. Now, if you sign the verification, and information is incorrect, and, and later on when you get your time, you realize that you have incorrect information, that would be too late for you to, for us to fix. So at that point, you would have to pay to make the correction. And the payment is not, is not a little money. Those are big monies, like over $5,000. So that's the reason why I'm saying that so everybody in your household can check your check your verification so that um, you will you will not have er error on it. All right. So for the subsidy, so the subsidy is is where you get help to pay your from the government or other institution to offset some of the examination fees. So the government will. The government will pay for four subjects for you. 
And that is if you are doing those four subjects. Those are the mathematics, English, information, technology, or EDPM, and a science subject. Any one of your science subjects that you are presently doing. But you must obtain 55% in each of the subjects. For the students who are on path, government will pay up to, up to eight subjects for you. But the same thing, condition applies. You must earn, you must earn an average of 50% overall. So that is between grade 10 and 11. You must have a 50% average for the path students to get the subsidy. All right, so another institution, NCB, um, normally pays for principles of business, principles of accounts, and information technology. But you must earn an average of 70%, an overall average of 70% for them to pay for you. So for, for, for everyone, all of you students, the de deadline, Deadlines are very important. So I cannot stress it too much. You must adhere to deadline. So whenever you get the deadline students, it cannot be that you're saying that you don't have the money or you don't have the resources. If you don't adhere to deadline, then it's going to cost more. So I'm asking for everything that you do with SBA payments, all the instruction as it relates to deadline, you have to adhere to it or else you are gonna pay double. Okay, thanks very much. Over to you, Ms. Beckford. Thank you very, very much, Mrs. Clark. Now students, please remember if you have a question, type the question in the chat. Uh, Mrs. Harris had asked that you have something with which to write, something on which to write. Now, there are, is quite a bit of information as it relates to CXC. Mrs. Clark just said it. You cannot wait until tomorrow is the deadline for you to, send, to ask your uncle at foreign to send the money and then tell Mrs. Clark it's not coming till next week. Mrs. Clark just said it is going to cost you. Miss gave you the information. Please convey the information. If your parents are not on, convey the information to the parents. Remember she said also it was for last year. So there may be some adjustments for this year, but it's just to give you an idea as to what may happen as it relates to CXC. Look here, when I was going to school, my mother did have to pay everything. You hear? Everything she had to pay. So you are getting assistance. All you need to do is perform. Please perform and take a little of the pressure off your parents. All right. Thank you so very much again, Mrs. Clark. At this time, we'll have our senior vice principal, Mrs. Palmer, who will take us through some information that you're going to need, especially for next week. Mrs. Palmer. Thank you very much, Ms. Beckford. Welcome back to all of you. It's nice to see you. It's nice to hear you. And it's nice to know that you are somewhere there looking at us and listening to us. We do appreciate your presence. And of course, we hope that as we go along for this year, though the times may seem hard and rough, we can make it together. No man is an island. No man stands alone. And of course, we need to lean on each other, whether we are strong or whether we are weak. We are here for each other and we ought to be together. Now I want to thank you again for joining and as we go through this year, our navigation through this process of learning is going to be a little bit different as you would have known. However, I see that some of you really know how to follow instructions and those who follow instructions usually pass exams. Now, you were told before today that you were to log in using your full name and your class. Now we have lots of persons who cannot be in the meeting with us because they didn't follow that instruction. Now for next week, on Friday, October 2, Friday, October 2 is your special day. Now this is the day when you will meet your friends and your form teacher in your phone room virtually. 
Now, these are the instructions. In order to see your new form teacher or to welcome back your form teacher and your form teacher from last year, welcome you back to school, you will have to follow my instructions carefully. If it is that you need to use a pen and paper to record what I am saying, well, that would be very good. Sometimes we can't trust the brain because sometimes we will. Now, your virtual orientation takes place October 2. That's Friday, October 2. The first scheduled set of classes for Friday, October 2, you will log in 10 minutes to 9. So you will log in at 10 minutes to 9. Your scheduled class will begin at 9 a.m. or your orientation will begin at 9 a.m. and it goes through to 11 a.m. So that's 9 to 11 a.m. Now, these grades will be having their orientation from 9 to 11. That's 11 arts, 11 HEA, and 11 HEB. Let me say that again. 11 arts, 11 HEA, 11 HEB. You will have your scheduled orientation at 9 o'clock. Now, please remember, everyone, to be on time is to be before time. So you must log in at the time you work in, so you will get the maximum time in your class with your teacher. Those who will log in at 10 minutes to 11, 10 minutes to 11, the students who will log in at 10 minutes to 11 are grades 10 BEC and 10 BED. That's 10 BEC and 10 BED. You will log in at 10 minutes to 11. And your schedule orientation takes place between 11 a.m. and 12.30 p.m. So 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m., we will have 10 BEC and 10 BED. The students who will log on at 10 minutes to 1, login time, 10 minutes to 1, these students are grades 10 HEA, 10 HEB, 10, sorry, I am so sorry. Let me go again. 11.30 to 1.30 would have been 11 ITA, 11 ITB, and 11 ITC. I hope that's what I said. The students who will log in at 10 minutes to 2, 10 minutes to 2, and your scheduled time is two to four. These students are 11 BEA, 11 BEB, 11 BEC. So students of 11 BEA, 11 BEB, and 11 BEC, you will log in at 10 minutes to two, and your schedule time is two to four. I am so sorry, Kyle Thompson. Please accept my apologies for confusing you. So let me repeat for all of you again. 10 minutes to 10 minutes to nine. 11 arts, 11 HEA, 11 HEB. 10 minutes 11 20 11 20 at 11 20 we will log in 11 ita 11 itb and 11 itc 11 20 
11 ITA, 11 ITB, 11 ITC. At 10 minutes to 2, 11 BEA, 11 BEB, 11 BEC. I hope that is clear. And I think it is typed in the chat. I'm so sorry for the confusion. Please accept my apologies. Okay. So for the classes or for the orientation, each group of students, so each class will be in your own room. On Zoom, it is known as a breakout room. Now, when you are assigned, when you log in using your full name and your class, you will be assigned to the classroom that you are assigned. When you are assigned to the room and you are sent to the room, a dialog box will come up on your device. A dialog box will come up on your device and it will invite you to join the breakout room. When it invites you to join, you're going to select the join button and then it will take you to the room that you are supposed to be joining. So you will click select the join button as soon as it gets up on your pops up on your screen and then it will take you to the room. So you all will log in 10 minutes before your time. So that's at nine, 10 minutes to nine. We have 11 arts, 11 HEA, 11 HEB. At 11.20, we have logging in 11 ITA, 11 ITB, 11 ITC. And at 10 minutes to two, we have 11 BEA, 11 BEB, and 11 BEC. When you are assigned to the room, the dialog box will come up for you to join the breakout room. You select that dialog box, you select the join, and it will take you straight to the room. I do hope that you will have a good rest of the day. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm so sorry again for the confusion. And I wish you all the best in all your endeavors. Please remember that in order for us to succeed, we must always try, try, and try again doesn't matter how many times we have to try. And don't forget that procrastination is the thief of time. Don't allow Mr. Procrastination to steal your time. God bless you and do have yourselves a good rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Palmer. Without further ado, I'm going to invite our principal, Mrs. Harris, to address us. I am picking up questions in the chat. So if you have questions, students, please, and they're not answered, please note your questions in the chat. We will respond to you uh, at the end of the presentations. Mrs. Harris. Um, thanks so very much, Ms. Beckford. Um, grade 11 students, parents, um, colleagues, Good afternoon again. I would have started off with you. I'm going to be closing out and um, answer, um, taking questions and answering those. And then that's it for the meeting. There are a bit that I have to say. So I will remind um, students that um, some questions keep on repeating in the chat. I was trying to assist by posting some information in the chat. There are persons who are still asking um, similar questions. I will be reviewing in terms of um, that which I need to say to you. So ensure that you have your pen and paper and take notes. I've heard um, our colleagues keep on saying the very same thing. With 11, we have to do what we must do. All right. Um, again, let me just say um, welcome to 2020-21 school year. Much to be done much to learn, a lot of things that we have to do via this, um, port, this um, online modality. Um, we're going to be asking you just to cooperate and um, listen up to what I have to say now. I want to thank Ms. Beckford who has been going through with us um, in terms of our agenda items. 
Ms. Beckford is here. She is your vice principal for grades um, 9 POR2T, 10, 11, 12, and 13. So Ms. Beckford is the acting vice principal. Um, Ms. Taylor is on leave. And we have Mr. Nelson who is also in the meeting with us, vice principal for grades 7 to 9. And um, we have our great supervisors, uh, Ms. Doig and Mr. Mills. We also have with us our form teachers who have shared with us, our dean of discipline, our nurse, um, our exam coordinator would have shared much information with you, our guidance counselors as well. I am going to be going through some things and I'm going to ask you to listen carefully. Regarding logging on um, to the SMS platform, students, um, parents, we will be utilizing three modes of online reach. Our mode of online reach is our SMS platform, which will be uh, My School Jamaica. So you're going to Google My School Jamaica. And when you Google My School Jamaica, you're going to log in to My School Jamaica. You're going to log into My School Jamaica. You're going to be logging in with your student ID. Please know the student ID number is the student ID number that is placed on your report. The student ID number on your report, you would have picked that up uh, from your report. Most of you would have been using it from last year. It's your student ID number that is on your report. If you have forgotten, it's, you can get it from your form teachers. Your student ID number is the, your default password. Some persons have um, changed a password last year to make it um, your own. Please use that. So for those persons, um, if you're having any form of difficulty logging on to My School Jamaica, this is how it goes. Log on, so you're going to go and Google log on to My School Jamaica. Then you log on to My School. Log in with your student ID, and this is found on your report. You can also, if it is that you have not picked up your report or you can't remember or cannot find the report because of one reason or the other, you're going to get this from your form teacher. Your default password is also the student ID number. If it is that you would have changed your student ID number to one that you would have made, you would have to try and remember that. If you are having difficulty, you would have to in indicate to us so we can reset the password or lab technicians will reset the passwords for you. Um, regarding classes, um, I have been scrolling through with the comments uh, in the chat regarding classes. Classes will begin October 5, 100% online. We won't be moving um, off the online platform unless we have the directive from the ministry and the cases for the transmission of COVID-19 is going down. You are one of the first set of persons we will be calling in when we gradually approach the face-to-face -face learning and it will be on a gradual basis. Grade 11, you will be the um, first set of persons we are going to be calling in. And uh, for the very reason there are practical areas, we are all doing vocational areas, two vocational areas, there are practical areas that you may have to come in, you will have to come in, sorry, for practicals. When that time comes, we will let you know, but for now with the spread of increased community spread of COVID-19, we have to safeguard you, we have to safeguard ourselves. So we are not allowing um, students to come in on a full wholesale basis for classes at this time. So be guided by the Minister of Health and Wellness and be guided by the Minister of Education, Youth and Information. We will um, allow in the grade 11 to come in on a face basis. After a while, after it is safe enough to do so, we will be allowing. You are one of the first set of students who will be coming and for face-to-face, -face, because there are much you have to do for your SBA. There's much that you have to do in terms of just linking on with you on a one-to-one. -one. But in the meantime, much can be done. 
I know some labs may be able to do online because they, are demonst they can demonstrate and students can follow and can write up their labs, but not all labs can be done online neither. So too, for the practical components, there are some aspects of your SBAs that can are written, that you can type up and start, but in terms of, for example, welding, you will have to come in and do the welding aspect. So when it is safe enough for students to start coming in, we will advise you and you will come in accordingly by class and by grade. Um, please note um, grade 11. When it is that we would have indicated that you can come in for any class face to face, or if you're going to be coming in um, for any reason whatsoever, if you're coming, for example, to purchase your mask, to bring in your, um, your, your vouchers, to collect your letters, because we do have our um, hard copies of letters, or if it is that a teacher may leave a package for you, because I know sometimes we may have to read some students um, via sending out packages for them. We will um, indicate when. I'm going to ask you, well, if we do that, please stick to the days, because there are numbered persons that we can accommodate any single day. We cannot allow for too many persons to be at the space here at Bridgeport High School at any given time. I am, however, letting you know if there are persons, if you have any com comorbidities, any um, illnesses that you think that is um, close enough to COVID-19, please do not come in. Please avoid coming in. Please stay home. You can ask your parent to collect for you. Please, to protect yourself and to protect others, do not come in if you are unwell. On another matter, October 4, 2020, Sunday, October 4, 2020, Bridgeport High School will be having its dedicatory service at the Portmore United Church, and this will begin at 8.30 a.m. Um, there will be a limited number of persons that will be in attendance physically at the church um, on the 4th of October, starting at 8.30, and it's about 20 to 25 persons, and these persons will include our chairman, Dr. Levy, your principals, your your principal yours truly, um, vice principals, Mrs. Palmer, Mr. Nelson and Ms. Beckford, our member of parliament, Mr. Robert Miller. And I must pause at this time, um, colleagues, um, staff members, parents and students, grade 11 students, to let you know that our member of parliament who has been recently elected as our new member of parliament for the Southeast St. Catherine constituency, a proud past student of Bridgeport High School. I want to say congratulations to Mr. Miller. Um, he will be in service with us on the 4th of October, as well as our counsel for the Bridgeport Division, Mr. Kennard Grant, our PTA President, Ms. Suzette Lawrence, um, our great supervisors, um, some students, and PTA exec members. We're asking all other persons to join the service online, um, YouTube, Facebook, at Portmore United Church, and it's live at portmoreunitedchurch.org. Um, during the week, um, parents and students, during the week of October 5, 2020, students will be given diagnostic tests for subject areas, and these will be done online. Most will be done via the Google forms that you can click and do your answer same time and teachers will receive your responses um, um, in quick time. Those, what we're doing, we, we're, we're doing this diagnostic test to know exactly where our students are, where you should be, and to work with you accordingly. So depends on the subject area or depends on where the students are. Um, there may be a lot more work for some areas some subject areas than do the other. Uh, Mrs. Roberts Clark would have spoken to you regarding examinations, but I would just want to use this opportunity just to congratulate all the students. I know we had um, one of our students, Kimberly, who classical example of one of our students who did extremely well in exams, but our students have done extremely well for the most part. Uh, we, based on my just um, quick
quick scan with the results we have we're looking at a 98 percent pass in cape subjects all cape subjects majority are 100 percent pass cxc passes um csec passes are great i looked at um um for example a classical example of one student in grade 12 distinction in three subjects grade one cape straight a profile our students have been doing well and we have had other subject area where students have received distinctions and distinction in C second cape is grade one with straight A profile. We're looking to see students with more of that because you can do it. Every single subject apart from the two subjects that Mrs. Roberts class would have spoken, spoken to you about, HSB and Spanish has SBA component, math and English has SBA component. A few persons had gone into exam with almost a failing grade because persons is reluctant to redo their SBA when it is marked the first time. Or when you finish, you just think you finish and that's it and it's done. If you go in with a failing SBA grade, it's going to kick you off into a grade three final. So we are appealing um, to parents, encourage your students to ensure that your SBAs are done well. You realize students that for this year, we did not do paper two. A greater reliance was on the SBA. Every single piece of SBA this year was moderated externally. So pair, um, six external examiners came in to look through one, two, three, four, five. If we had 300 persons sent up for English, every piece of SBA had to be moderated. And I had to sign off every single um, forms for these moderations. So students, take your work seriously because we know our destination is to do well, to make ourselves proud, to make our parents proud, our family proud, our school proud, and in fact, to make our society a better one. So external examination, normally um, parents, in October, by mid-October, so on, we would be paying for CXCs. Keep it at that. It may be a little bit delayed since we're just starting school, but it's not going to be too far delayed because we're still having an academic year that's going to be going to be ending in July. Um, examination will also be done within the same time. We, I cannot speak for CXC, but I know that we will be doing CXC um, in May, June. May, June or July, don't know the exact time, but payment for CXC will be early. You would have gotten an estimated cost of what it was last year. It may be a little bit more. Start saving parents and um, students. Please remind your parents. And I hope students would have been um, thrifty in terms of saving because you're not going out now. So you save. And if anything, you have to make up with the parents to so assist with your examination. All your exams should be paid for. And this, as I say, will happen October into early November. We will get that details to you and we will send that information to you. One question was asked in the chat about voluntary service. It, it is also, the information is also on your letter. This letter has been posted to the um, social media platform. It has been posted to the WhatsApp group. Our form teachers, and please note your form teachers, or most of your form teachers are the same form teachers you had at grade 10. They carry over to grade 11. Your form teachers would have posted it in your groups. It's also posted into the WhatsApp group as well. Um, but I will repeat the deadline for handing in of voluntary service reports. We're also going to send the forms to you because some persons may have not have picked up their voluntary service information. This will be in January 2021. That's a deadline, but you can complete it anytime, particularly for, particularly for the students who have been involved in extracurricular activities and sports. We have had our football um, kickoff start for and the 2020-21 season in the summer, but it has to be aborted because ISA canceled all ISA competitions for the first semester. But however, those students would have done several hours. We're asking for voluntary service hours, no to be 30 because of the COVID-19 and we're not sending out persons to move into um, government institutions as per normal. 
But I know right now, as we are starting back school, there are students who have great affiliation with their primary schools and I know schools need assistance. If it is that school, your primary school teachers need some assistance, if it is with your parents' approval, you can go to do some hours. But please note, separate apart from that, what we have instituted, instituted for this year is to give five credit hours for each club's participation. I know Ms. Ferron is a Red Cross um, link patron like myself. There are several teachers who are facilitating clubs. These clubs will be fed to you in terms of club times and how you can reach them in terms of your logon credentials. Clubs will be facilitated via the virtual mode. Attendance will be taken. Your participation in clubs will be five credit hours per club participation. And we are going to give you the criteria. It can be attending one time and it is participation. It will be over time. And we're going to be detailing in terms of the procedure protocols for that. So grade 11 is no longer 60 hours in the pandemic year. It is now 30 hours. Um, Ms. Banton from the, the book room administrator also indicated for persons who need to come in to give voluntary service um, can indicate to her. Um, this information has been posted into the Bridgeport High School WhatsApp group. You can indicate to her and with your parents' permission, you can protect yourself, wear your, um, wear your mask and um, come out to do those voluntary service hours. But we have put things in place for you to ensure that you can get those credit hours even without leaving out of your space of your home. So 30 credit hours you have until January 25 to 29, 2021 to hand in those reports. Um, so again, we will be sharing with grade 11 students how to write up the reports, give you samples, and you will have them. We will feed those on the platforms as well as in the WhatsApp group. I shall remind you, um, colleagues, parents, um, students, how you can reach us again. For Bridgeport High School email address, it is bridgeport underscore zero two at yahoo.com or bridgeport.hi.sce at moe.gov.jm. Or we have from the administrative point an administrative staff who manages each grade WhatsApp group. Grade 11 is managed by one of our staff and the grade email is grade 11, the number 11, bhs at yahoo.com. It is G-R-A-D-E, all lower caps, 11-B-H-S at yahoo.com. So students who want to know particular information about your grade, you can also email us at that grade email. We have our parents that we send email to via the grade email as well. There are parents who may not be on the grade email. We ask that you inbox us at 495. 5469. That is the school's WhatsApp number. I'm going to ask Ms. Palmer just to repost it in the chat. 495 5469. That is the WhatsApp number that you can inbox us your email. Let us know if you if we can add you to the WhatsApp group. I will tell you that the WhatsApp group for the, the same number, WhatsApp group for the school. As the numbers for parents, when is it that you are in the group? This is only managed by the administrative staff. Only administrative staff members can post to the group. So we won't be having random posting and good morning posting and smile postings to the group. Only information for students are posted in this group. So parents, I'm appealing, please send your um, information, inbox the number 495-5469, 876-495-5469, inbox your WhatsApp number 
inform us to add you to the group. Also, your email address. So we can also um, add you to the grade 11 email group. We're asking you, parents. Um, we have taken all the information that we have on file for you. And we have started the group to send out emails. We have much in terms of um, email bouncing back because some um, emails are not in place again. So please get in touch with us. Other platforms you can get in touch with um, Bridgeport High School. Follow us on Instagram at Bridgeport High 876 or on Facebook page Bridgeport High School Portmore on our YouTube page, Bridgeport High School Television. In addition, some additional matters, subject teachers and form teachers, once we start with um, class orientation and starting with this uh, medium, even at this point, students, we have asked everyone to log in with your names and your classes. There are some students who still did not get into the meeting because we are seeing and I'm just going to tell you a couple of names. I just wrote them out. We have seen S. Vassal, Pope and Kelly, for example, Galaxy 820, iPhone. We don't know those persons. Put your name on your class and we will admit you to this group. Put your name on your class and you will be admitted to your class group. Please remember. Um, when you go for orientation, when you go in your Google Class, I told you we're having three main platforms. The Google Classroom, the WhatsApp, sorry, the Zoom, sorry, um, class, as well as our main platform, the SMS My School Jamaica. You have to enter with your name and your class and your student ID number or your student ID number as requested. Please, there are some persons who are not going, are going to be waiting in the room forever. We cannot identify a cell phone for a student. We cannot use inanimate names for persons, human, humans. All right? So following um, parents and students, every teacher will be having a physical register. They will have a physical mark book. We will have to report to the Ministry of Education starting October 5. Also next week, Friday, when we meet you for orientation, we're taking the information of students who would have registered, who would have been, who we would have been speaking to. And we are going to be taking information of every single student. And we're marking that we have seen student X, student Y, student, and the other persons would have been absent from the class. We're asking students where it is that you are having any form of issues, either it be device issue, either it be connectivity issues, either it might be any kind of issues. Mental, physical, or whatever. Please share those issues with your guidance counselors, they would have shared straight numbers for them. They have told you what those numbers are. Please share with them so we can know and we can make a notation that when you are reporting to the Ministry of Education, and please note we have a brand new minister, Honorable Favel Williams, and she has hit the ground running. Mr. Nesta Morgan, in terms of our um, education, Minister um, assisting and um, Minister Williams. Those persons have hit the ground running and we have to report to our regional office who will re uh, report to our national Ministry of Education and information has to be given in terms of how we are reaching, what we are doing and um, our school will be inspected in terms of what actually we are doing here at Bridgeport High School. We're asking you um, students, ensure that when we start class, you get yourself in class with your names and with your, con um, with your class that you're in. 
you must know your student ID numbers. Your student ID numbers are found on your report. If you don't remember it, come and pick up your report for those who did not. It's on it. For those who may not remember the same way, you can come in, pick it up. Good. Your, your, form, your grade supervisors and form teachers can also help, but we are all from at a distance. This grade 11, we have to take responsibility for action and for how we learn. Past students. Students who are on the past, um, past program, please know that the Ministry of Education um, will direct in terms of how your benefits go. You have been receiving benefits directly through the ministry or through the ministries. You will continue to do so. The ministry has not sent to school, so lunches are not expected to be collected by part of students. Also, you would have heard about the tablets and um, about laptops for part of students. I'm going to ask you to listen out to the ministry's informed information um, when it is that they are ready. They are not at this time. Nothing is at school at this time for any part of student, but you will inform. And I know the ministry is working overtime to ensure that um, these are received by students. Um, grade 11, we have done much in order to receive you face to face when that time comes. And as I had indicated that one of the first set of students that will be gracing their presence face to face once we have a decline in COVID-19 cases will be the grade 11 because crucially and grade 12, 13, because crucially you will be doing your examinations and there are some things that you must come in to do with a practical nature. Um, we have been doing much and I will just tell you some of them. We have installed um, wash hands sanit and sanitization stations right around the compound and i can tell you a few of them um we have also installed their installation isolation area we have one at the isolation here which is at cosmetology we have refurbished that entire area and set up isolation area there so we have wash and station there at the main of at the main gate as you come in at six form in front of business um in front of pe in front of um the classroom blocks on the netball court. There are several um, wash and stations right around the campus. Uh, we have set those for you. We have marked all classes six foot social distancing. For those persons who are at grade 10, who did examinations and congratulations to you. Those who did examinations and you came in June, you would have seen where we have marked out on students would have been accommodated in their classes. Only 15 students in the regular classrooms can be accommodated with a six foot social distance marking. Um, which means when it is that we're coming in face to face, we can only accommodate a limited number of students per day at any time. So we will invite you to come in at that time when it is um, safe enough for you to do so, but it will be at a social um, six foot social distancing. So our classrooms are marked out. Our Binichel is also marked out for classes. Our library is also marked out. All purpose rooms, those bigger, that larger spaces are also marked out. And those spaces that are marked out for um, classes, students are expected to sit in those positions as, per, as, as they did when they come for the exam period in June. We also have the entire fencing along Gibson Road completed. Um, and also painted. So you will see a brand new look for your school. There are several improvements that we have done in school and we have concentrated much on how to deal with online and deal with in terms of connectivity and um, distant learning platforms. We have done all of that and more throughout the summer um, with the hope that we would have been engaging with you on a blended learning approach. Um, colleagues, parents, students, um, there be maybe some more that you may want to know, but I just want to um, ask of you, this is your last year. 
there are persons who are going to need transcript. There are persons who are going to need um, recommendations. There are persons going to need all manner of things. I'm going to ask you, get things in place. Um, ensure what you're doing, you, you're doing it to the very best of your ability. Ensure that when you do your first semester exams, when you do your diagnostic test, you're getting at least 70% and over. Maintain that mark that which we came in here at with PEP. We are going to ask you to maintain that average. Um, please note some of us may just go overseas. Your GPA with a 70% average is a two point something, not four. They need to be getting like 90 or so to get a four or four point something GPA for um, getting even scholarships overseas and getting good scholarships. So students, do well, work hard, and we just want to wish you all the very best and we want to welcome you wholeheartedly back to school. There's much to do. I know you will be strong enough to do so. Keep yourself safe, keep, your, keep yourself healthy. Your family, um, ensure that as you go out, you're protecting yourself and protecting others around you. We're looking forward to a very productive year. And if we don't have any um, information in terms of queries in the chat, this is it um, for today. But Ms. Beckford will direct us to see if we have information in the chat and we will answer those for you and that will be it for the meeting. Thanks so very much for listening. Thank you very much and have a very good afternoon, um, students. Ms. Beckford? Mrs. Harris, there are many, many questions coming out of the chat. And I'm not sure, students, why some of you are saying you're not getting assistance. We instructed you at the start to type your questions and we said that the questions would have been answered at the end. You need to be patient and you need to be respectful, okay? All right, uh, there are a couple of persons who are inquiring about how they can go about securing books that they have at school. Uh, Dominic says he has lab books and writing books at school. Dominic, you will have to make arrangements with your teachers for the teacher to assist you in collecting the books. I'm not sure, but the lab books, um, you would have to be in contact with your teacher, especially as it relates to the lab book for those persons who are asking about books at school. So you have to make contact with your teacher. If it is that you are trying that route and that route doesn't work, go to your, vice, your grade supervisors, all right? Get in touch with your grade supervisors or for your books. Um, you can wait until the orientations next week and then you will be placed in your form classes. So next week, you will be placed in your form classes with your form teachers. And that in that forum, you will be able to get um, some of the more specific questions answered that you have. Mrs. Harris, persons are asking about labs and practical subjects. Um, sure, it has been addressed, but just to reiterate. Yes, miss. Um, oh. As I had indicated, um, students, as soon as it gets better for us to come in for labs, also for practicals, we will do so. But all the theory-based aspects, all the demonstrations that we can do online, we will do so. There are some errors and components of our SBAs and labs that can be done virtually, those will be done. But um, now with the heights of the um, community spread, um, we won't be allowing students to come out for classes face-to-face, -face, not starting October 5. But as soon as it is safe enough to do so, as we get the go-ahead from the Ministry of Health and Wellness and from the Ministry of Education, grade 11 will be the first set of students that we will be asking to come in for practicals. Thank you, Miss. There are a number of persons who are indicating that they are not able to get in contact with their teachers. I'm going to ask, please, there are a couple of routes that you can take. Now, a lot of you, I'm not sure why, because you should have been in classes from March. I'm sorry. Okay, so there are some persons who have um, contacts with their teachers from last year try and get back those contacts or link with a classmate to see if they are in a room. 
if that fails, Mrs. Harris has asked that persons log on to My School Jamaica. There are a number of persons who are saying they're still unable to. I know I'm seeing one particular name that I had given very clear instructions on how to log on. If we give you instructions and it's, you're still not getting on, you need to let us know. Because once we give you the instructions and you're still not getting on and you don't say anything, we're assuming that you're okay, all right? So get in touch with your teachers, whichever teacher you're on a platform with. Just say to the teacher, can you help me to log on? All that needs to happen is that um, the teacher needs to contact the lab tech and the lab tech will reset your password, will send you a message and you will be able to log on. That's for all the people who are having problems logging on to the My School Jamaica portal. Um, there's someone who's asking about candidate number and center number. It's a little early for that. You will get that information in, in time. They're asking about volunteer, voluntary service. You will get more information on voluntary service at the orientation next week. Not everything will be dealt with here. Some things we're going to deal with at that time orientation so for voluntary service the orientation the class orientation we'll work that through with you uh there is one person mrs harris who is asking how will recommendations be done for cxc exams all right i think it would have been said already but um reinforcement please note for recommendation all students um based on your performance will be eligible to do your examinations. When I said based on your performance, listen, your, your semester one examinations that we have, we will be using it. You must have a minimum of 55%. Ms. Roberts Clark would have told you, 55% average grade in each subject. In addition to that, you must have or started or be in the process of doing your SBA. So that's how you are recommending yourself, students, remember. And it's not an impossibility because all students should have been performing at 70% average, which means that that is our benchmark. However, if you have um, slipped down a little, 55%, that's the minimum um, to make you automatically qualified regarding to grade but however you must also be doing have done in the process of completing your sba so that's qualifying um for recommendation we're not doing a, a mock exam for example it is just the end of your exams that you would have done along with your sba all right thank you very much mrs harris um there are some questions with regards to payment for CXC. I'm not sure if Mrs. Roberts Clark is still here, if she can take it. Students are concerned as to when they will be expected to make payments for CXC for this year. And there are a number of students have asked. Okay, um, Mrs. Ms. Beckford? Yes, Miss. And all the students, for, for the payments, we, we would have to wait for, um, the directive from overseas exam office. However, on, an, on a regular basis, the, the period for payment is normally October leading into the first part of November. Thank you. Thank you very much, Miss. You're welcome. Um, for the students who are having problems finding teachers, there is Mrs. Roberts Clark. You can mute back your mic, mic I think. That's you. Pardon me. Could you repeat, please? Are you muted? I'm not muted. Okay. All right. For the students who are still having problems finding, reaching, engaging their teachers, there are some email addresses that have been placed here. Please send an email to one of the email addresses. Just scroll through, through the chat and find the email address, and then you can send your concern there. 
All right. Um, Mrs. Harris, there are one or two students who are asking if they have misplaced, if they've lost their IDs, will um, any arrangements be made for these students? When it is safe enough to do so, Miss, we will, but not, not in October right now, not with the community spread of COVID-19. We are not doing that now. Okay. Thank you. Um, um, let me just say something for the ID, um, student ID number. It, um, it is the ID number that is on the report and not necessarily the one on the card because I know grade 11, but grade seven will be getting the ID number on the card, same as the one on the report. So right now, student, for those who would have misplaced, we will ensure that um, in terms of replacement of IDs, you'll get them done before exams. And exams this year um, will not be done in December because we have started off late. It will be done in January. So we will make arrangement for um, it to be done prior to examinations. And we don't know the modality. No, depends on what is happening. Modality for examinations. We will let you know. But um, IDs will be done um, closer to that time. Not now, starting off with the virtual teaching. Thank you very much, Miss. There are some persons who are asking about clubs and societies, how you will be able to be a part of that. In the orientation next week, we will provide you with that information. There are some students who are concerned that they have been um, given SBAs, but they need some additional help with the SBAs. I'm going to ask that you either reach out to your teacher if you're not getting through. Um, you can send a message to the um, email address for your class, uh, outline the issues that you're having, or you can send to one of the WhatsApp group. Remember, we're putting a lot of things in place to support you. So if you try one method and it doesn't work, try another me medium. Miss Mayor had given some uh, telephone numbers. If you're feeling frustrated, you're trying and nothing seems to be happening, ask guidance counselors if they can help you to resolve some of the issues that you're having. But there are some persons who have placed questions with regards to particular subjects. Um, we will have a look at it and then see to what extent we can provide some kind of assistance. The, as I said before, voluntary service will be addressed next week. Mrs. Harris, there's a question with regards to evening school. When will it begin and how can they get information on the evening school? We're present, presently doing registration for evening school. So if persons uh, wish to do um, evening school, sessions in evening school, registration is currently going on. So you can come in, fill out the registration form and get the information. There is a um, brochure for evening school at present. The office, main office um, opens 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. So for any matter that you need to come in to deal with at school, um, 9 a.m a.m. to 3 p.m., including evening school and registration and other information. All right, and please, when you're coming out, your mask. Thank you very much. Kareem Roswell, Kareem Roswell, 11 ITC. Please point out that problem, that issue to your form teacher when you meet your form teacher next week. Kareem, point out your concern with regards to your name on the S SMS to your form teacher. It's very, very important that you do. Thanks. Uh, there are some persons who are not listening. So we're answering questions and you're asking the same question. Students, remember I said that you're gonna have to be, you're gonna have to be a little more focused. All right. A number of the questions that are coming now have already been addressed. And if we keep on going over, we will not leave this evening. Deadline for SBAs, each teacher will set deadline based on how the SBA is going to be approached. You follow the deadlines as set by the teachers. However, Mrs. Roberts Clark has said that the final project should be ready for submission by the end of January, I think she said. All right. So the final project should be ready. Now, listen to me carefully. I tell my students that usually the first draft will be as it the name says a draft. 
and the grade that you get for the first draft is not usually the best grade that you can get. Usually the teachers I know mark and point out areas where you can possibly improve on your grade people, do corrections and then resubmit. That is only possible if you stick to the deadlines. If you miss all the deadlines and then at the end of January, you're going to do a hurry come up thing, your grade will be low. Remember we said those persons this year who did well, got good grades, did well in CXE, are the persons who did well on their SBAs. Doing well on the SBAs mean you have to start, you have to submit, when the draft is due, you have to make the corrections. You cannot just get it and send it back the same way we send it to you as teachers. Make the corrections. Students, you are getting an opportunity to go into the exam with good grades. Make use of the opportunity, please. I'm begging you. All right. So follow your teachers. I'm aware that there are some persons who are saying they're having problems. Um, the we will work we will work on assisting all right for specific subject areas um 55 okay i think persons are trying to assist each other in the group i think that's it i am not picking up any other questions for those persons who've been asking specific questions about specific subjects i've made a note of it i will investigate but please log on to the sms and we will have the teachers um in post the information as it relates to the SBAs but please bear in mind it cannot be you just you're just getting the thing and running with it you need to engage with the teachers so you need to be in the classes it is a little beyond the time that we had hoped that we would have ended if there are no other pressing matter we will adjourn for now and um, we will see you next week again. Please continue with the work that the teachers would have given you and work very, very hard on the SBA. Mrs. Harris, if there is nothing else, Mrs. Palmer. No. That's it, Mrs. Ms. Beckford. Thank um, you. Students, thank you so very much for listening and we hope for a very productive day. Ms. Palmer. That's it for me too, miss. Enjoy the rest of your evening all.